this computer. Okay, and I'm gonna share now. This is the first time I'm sharing my screen, so y'all forgive me if I mess up. Okay, so that's a little bit of what Mr. Jordan can do. So bringing him right now, I'm introducing to you all, Mr. LaVon Jordan, and LaVon is on you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, I used to complain a little bit, as hopefully you all were able to see. Can't do much of that now, because I'm much older. Um, but uh, yes, I just wanted to kind of share my story with everybody. Um, Grew up in a small part of North Carolina called Murfreesboro, North Carolina. Um, so it's about eight and a half, nine hours from Atlanta. Um, was raised by my mom and my grandmother. Uh, was heavily influenced uh, by things outside of the home. Um, most notably, like uh, athletes, uh, older guys in the neighborhood. I, I kind of kind of gravitated towards uh, 
those personalities and kind of took things that I saw from those individuals and tried to implement it in my life. Um, <clears throat> so I think I knew at a, probably five or six years old that I wanted to, to, to play basketball professionally. Um, I think I started playing, I think I was three or four when I actually started playing. Probably started playing competitively around the ages of six or seven. Um, was fortunate enough to play in various like recreational leagues and, and things of that nature. Um, to, sh to show my age a little bit, um, when I was coming up, there was no social media. Um, so like all of that stuff was kind of far-fetched. Like everything that, that, uh, that kids that I grew up with that we saw, uh, we always saw it on television. We never saw it like in our neighborhoods, never saw it in our homes. Um, it was always on TV. So like, so YouTube for me was a VCR. Um, I remember getting, um, I think there were two Michael Jordan tapes back in the day. Um, it was called Come Fly With Me and Michael Jordan's Playground. Like I watched those things religiously, like hour, hour on hour, just trying to, to soak in as much as I possibly could because that's, that's what I wanted to be. Like when I, like when I grew up, um, didn't necessarily want to be like your, your fireman or anything. Like I wanted to do something that was kind of outside of the box. Um, so yeah, growing up in small part of North Carolina, um, we didn't really have a lot of opportunities. Um, my mom would always tell me she just wanted me, she just wanted me to do something that would take me away from being home because so many people there would just get stuck at being home and never would leave. Like this is kind of like a, a cyclical, cyclical thing where, you know, you go to school, you graduate and you come back home and, and you never leave. So her, her biggest thing was no matter what you do, I just want you to, to be able to leave from home and do it away from here. Um, so I was fortunate in that regard that, you know, my mom, my grandmother, they, uh, they emphasize education a lot. Um, I think that's been beneficial for me um, throughout my journey, not to just put all of my eggs in one basket with, uh, with basketball, because basketball um, is great if, if you're fortunate enough to, to have success in it. Um, you can be successful and it, it will still kind of like let you down. Um, I had, I had some success with it. Um, thought I would be playing for much longer than I actually played. But looking back, I was still fortunate enough to play as long as I did play. Um, so just to give you a little insight about, I guess, my journey with basketball, um, played at all levels. Like, as I mentioned, I started at three or four, started playing competitively five, six years old. So um, played in junior Hornets, um, grew up and played in middle school, recreational leagues, um, played in high school, went to a small high school. So I was not heavily recruited, um, did not have any scholarship offers coming out of high school. So that was, that was tough because that was kind of what you were taught. Like you have to get a scholarship to be able to go to college. So, um, kind of taking you back. I graduated from high school in 2003. Um, as I mentioned, I didn't have any, any scholarship offers. Decided to go to um, the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Uh, went down there, started in summer school of 03. Um, my, my intent was to go there and hopefully walk on or try out for the basketball team, not knowing how that part of it actually worked. I would later find out, like, once I got to a four-year college, how that actually works. But 17, 18-year-old me, my idea is, well, if I didn't get a scholarship, I'll go somewhere and I'll work hard enough and earn a scholarship. Come to find out, that's not necessarily how it works. Um, I got down there. I went and introduced myself to the coaches after, like, days of trying to build my confidence up to go in and speak to the coaches. Introduced myself to them. Um, told them that I wanted to eventually walk on and play on their team. Uh, and then I would actually eventually find out that that wasn't an option. They didn't allow tryouts. So I'm um, 18 years old in summer school, not knowing how I'm going to further my basketball career. Um, it just so happens that I'm playing on a summer league team and one of my teammates, he's going to a, a local junior college that's right outside of Wilmington. Um, was fortunate enough 
to play well in a summer tournament, and his coach saw me and provided me an opportunity to come play at his junior college. Um, had it not been for that opportunity, I probably wouldn't have earned a scholarship. I wouldn't have played in college, um, and then I wouldn't have been able to, to further my career and go play overseas. Um, so I'll say all of that to say, like, sometimes even your backup plans aren't necessarily the ones that you may have created for yourself. Um, you got to have luck, good fortune, and um, always, you know, pray and have God on your side because sometimes he can have backup plans that will kind of overcome what you might have planned for yourself. Um, so, I, like I said, I was lucky enough to – to go play at a junior college where um, I spent one year, played well enough and earned a four year scholarship, well, three year scholarship to Elon University. And that's, um, that's the school that I played at that you all saw in the, the video clips. Um, spent three years there, um, had, the, had the wonderful opportunity to play against some notable current NBA players, um, played against Chris Paul. We actually played against them when they were number one team in the nation. So this was, I think, 2004, 2005, I think. I um, played against Chris Paul, um, played against George Hill, um, I, who I think now plays for the Oklahoma City Thunder, played against Thaddeus Young. He actually played here at Georgia Tech, so I played against him. And um, most notably, played against Steph Curry. Steph Curry was a freshman my senior year in college. Um, he was a freshman, um, I have a pretty interesting story. The first time we played them, Steph was talking, talking a little noise. Um, and so we were kind of going back and forth and I, I was lucky enough to make a shot on him. And so I proceeded to trash talk to him a little bit. And he kindly reminded me of what the scoreboard was and they were winning by like 15 or 20 more points than what we were. So, um, Got to see that up close and personal. Um, at, obviously, at the time, I didn't know he would be as huge of a basketball player as he is now. Um, he could obviously shoot the basketball um, well then, but things that he's able to do now just is a testament to, to him and, like, how much he's worked on his game. But, um, yeah, I had a, had a wonderful opportunity to play against those guys in college. Um, I, like I said, I went through college. Um, and then I was able to, to actually make my dreams come true and um, got a contract to play overseas. And this was 07. Uh, my first contract I played in Spain, um, had never been outside of the country. So this was a, a major culture shock to me. And as crazy as it sounds, I didn't realize Spain was that far away from the United States until I got there. Um, I had never been anywhere where I couldn't get on the road and go see my mom or my grandmother. So like to, to get into a foreign country and not have any idea of how to speak the language. And like when you go out there as, a, as an imported player, the team doesn't do too much to facilitate your transition to their culture or to their country. So you're kind of on your own with other Americans. Um, you might have one or two other Americans on the team and you all kind of figure it out. Most times you might play with somebody that's already been over there so they kind of have experience and I was fortunate enough to play with uh, an American who had been overseas for several years prior to my arrival so that helped me um, get a, acquainted to being away um, because it's some it's some it's some long some long nights and long days over there because you're gone for nine ten months out of the year where you're living abroad, you're living in a new country and new surroundings and trying to navigate. So this was, like I said, this was 2007. So I was 20, 21, didn't know how to cook. Um, didn't know how to do much other than, you know, keep myself clean, stuff like that. So it was, it was a major point in my life where it helped me grow up um, because I was on my own. Um, so just figuring out like how to, to live on my own in a new country and also learning the ropes as a professional basketball player. Um, so to, to come from where I came from, um, it was kind of mind boggling to think that I was able to, to reach that level. Um, 
uh, being a childhood friend of mine, we uh, we always had this saying, like, it was either the league or overseas. Like, there was no in-between. Like, we knew somehow, some way, we were going to get to, like, where we wanted to get to. So I got to that point. Um, was fortunate enough to play, played a handful of years overseas. Um, played in Spain, played in Japan, and also I played in Austria. Um, a cool story about playing in Japan. Uh, Kobe Bryant is like my favorite player of all time. My my first time playing in Japan, the opposing team, um, the coach of that team was Kobe's father. So I'm 20, I think I was 22, 23 at the time, had no idea that his father was out there coaching. So to come out of the tunnel and to see his father, um, it just kind of blew me away. Had no desire of wanting to, like, I didn't want to play. I just wanted to, like, go over there and touch him and talk to him. Um, so I've had some pretty pretty cool experiences. Been able to travel around the world and play basketball for a living. Um, didn't necessarily have the opportunity to do it as long as I wanted to. Um, I played from 07 until, I think it was 20, 2011, 2012, um, where I actually I tore up my ACL and my MCL and my right knee. I um, was playing in Austria. I think we had maybe two or three weeks left in the season. So this would have been the first time that I actually played an entire season without getting hurt or without getting home, getting sent home for a multitude of reasons. So I get to the end of that season and I um, have like this catastrophic knee surgery um, where obviously the, the rehab for that is anywhere from eight to 12 months. Um, and once you have one of those types of injuries, uh, you kind of you kind of get pushed to the back of the line, so to speak. Because uh, with basketball, it's a new wave of players coming out every year. So it's a wave that are coming out, whether they're going pro here in the States or whether they're going to play professionally overseas, like each year. So you're, you're literally, I don't want to say playing for your life, but you're playing for your professional life every day. And when I, when I suffered that injury, um, that really, that really hampered my career and any shot I had of continuing it. So I'm at this point, I'm 26, 27, um, had that type of injury, um, not really knowing what I was going to do next. Uh, and just really, I guess it kind of put me in a, a real depressed state just because like I've been playing basketball my entire life since I was three, four years old. And so now you're grown, you have other responsibilities. And this is, for me, this is how I've been making my living. And I didn't know, didn't really know anything else, didn't have a passion to do anything outside of playing basketball. Um, and so I have reconstructed knee surgery, um, decided to try to pursue it for another two or three years. Um, was, not, was not lucky enough to get another opportunity. And so then I had to had to shift gears because life life doesn't stop. Um, life can be cruel that way. Like things can happen to you, and you don't have the opportunity to to really like sit and and sulk. And um, so it makes no, it excuse difficult. me. And not sorry? to interrupt, but you're my biggest fan. I'm your biggest fan. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm your biggest fan. Someone said they're your biggest, they're, they are your biggest fan. I'm not. Who's that? Do you mind saying your name? I'm not sure. They put themselves back on mute. It's an iPhone. I don't see a name. So they said, maybe okay. it may be Zach, but I don't know. But hopefully he'll pop okay. again. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I was talking about just recovering from from having knee surgery and just trying to switch gears. Um, fortunately enough, like I mentioned earlier, uh, my mom and my grandmother just really spoke a lot about education and making sure that you have education to supplement whatever else you're trying to do. Not saying that education is the end all be all for everyone, because obviously school is not meant for everyone. So you want to just try to have a plan that works for you, a backup plan that works for you, whether that supplements your your number one plan or whether that 
backup plan leads you down another path. Unfortunately for me, I went back to school, I believe this was 20, 2013, 2014. I went back to school and um, I got my master's degree in business administration with concentration in sports business. Um, at that same time, I was fortunate enough to be working for a, uh, a state agency here in Georgia, uh, the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. Been there for going on, I think it's eight years now. So I've been able to hold a, um, several different positions that have helped enhance my, um, my professional career outside of sports and anything like that. And so I've moved up the chain there from, I actually started there as a temp employee. And now I'm a program director uh, for the procurement and operations division for the agency. So I've just been fortunate enough to, to be able to supplement my dreams with having a strong educational background. Um, like I said, I went back to school and got my master's and that's, that's certainly been beneficial as I've been able to climb the professional ranks. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've kind of struggled with moving forward, it was trying to find something that I'm um, passionate about outside of what I currently do for a living. Um, so the last couple of years, I've been trying to, to find other things. Um, I know a group of friends of, a group of my friends and I, we, last year, we uh, started a, a joint collective where we're um, a group of investors where we try to invest in real estate, tech, and other industries. Um, also, just trying to establish myself as an entrepreneur to, to have some ownership in something that I control myself. Um, so just trying to tap into other areas of um, my life that I can try to be successful in. Tom, are you progressing? Say that, say that one more time. You have an echo, who's this? Okay, hold on, let's see if they're in chat. Um, the person's name is Ralph. He said, that's who said, he's a big fan of yours. I'm not sure he is Ralph, last name R-J-A-I-L-I. -I. So he said, I, your biggest fan. I, I appreciate that, Ralph. Is Ralph one of your kids? No, I'm not sure. He probably saw this on Facebook or on Instagram or on Twitter. So I'm okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, I certainly, I certainly appreciate that, Ralph. But um, so, were you finished? Because uh, we're gonna go into questions, or do you want to say anything else about your experience? Um, I can just talk about, um, just being, uh, persistent because as I mentioned, just like, uh, how I grew up, we just didn't have, wasn't a lot of opportunities presented to, to kids like myself. And so you kind of, you, you really want to have, um, a lot of faith in yourself. Um, I think one of the things I was taught growing up is that doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. So just it's more or less saying like having self doubt or other people doubt you can can actually destroy your chances of ever fulfilling your dreams before you even give yourself an opportunity to do so. Um, even if you fail at attempting to accomplish your dreams, um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Cause you don't want to be much older living with regret and not feeling like you didn't exhaust every option to pursue things that you were passionate about. So that would kind of be like my um, pervasive message for to everybody. Like you just gotta gotta keep keep at it. Okay. I love your speech. Thank you. Okay. So before I get to my questions. Any, first of all, any of the youth that are online, do you have a question for Mr. Jordan? Um, what does persuasion mean? Say, say that again, Morgan. 
When he said he was persistent, something like that. Oh, persistent? Yeah, yeah. what does that mean? Uh, it just means constantly working. Um, so anytime you have a dream or anything that you, that you really want to accomplish, um, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication. So say if you wanted to, to grow up and be an athlete, like people are constantly working on their craft. Like you don't really want to take days off or not attempt to get better. Even if you, even if you're not per se in the gym every day, you want to figure out a way that you can, um, become sharper at your craft, whatever that craft may be, whether it's a doctor or firefighter, whatever it is, you can always be constantly working on your craft. And that's the one thing that um, I think I like looking back, that's something I wish I would have been able to, to do even more than what I did. Um, how many hours do you think I should practice after, like after school and stuff? How many, pra- how many hours a day do you think I should practice? Um, it's not a, it's not a blueprint or like a template. You just, you kind of just want to, you want to immerse yourself in it. You want to make sure you're working as hard as you possibly can, as much as you can. And that could be two or three hours. Like you work hard for two hours might be better than me working on, like working out for four hours. This kind of depends on, um, your attention to detail. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from our youth before we go to the adults? Okay, any adults that have any questions for Mr. Mr. Jordan? Hello, this is Brenda. How you doing, Mr. Jordan? Jordan? Doing pretty good. How are you? Good. I'm doing great, thank you. I really enjoyed your presentation. I have a question I want to ask you, just kind of throw out there. Um, I heard, uh, well, not heard, uh, we was in a conversation once uh, before, just some people talking, and I, one of the participants said that it's not good to have a plan B, as, you know, especially for your dream. And I wanted to know, what's your take on that? Because I think that it's good to have something in mind in case your plan A don't work out. I guess what they were saying was that if you have a backup plan, then you're not going to pursue your your dream you're not going to pursue your dream as hard as you should go in so uh what do you how do you feel about that when um that question you know presents itself like that when people come across and and we'll say things that you know according to them how would you tell the youth that it's good it's okay to have a plan b um i i would approach it like this um for me for instance i I knew I was going to play basketball until I was 35 or 40. I'm 35, <laughs> I'm 35 now, and I haven't played professionally in like 10 years. Right. So um, in the back of my mind, I always try to prepare myself for if it ends today. Like I, I have to be able to, to switch gears and do something else. Um, it's not necessarily taken away from your, your main dream if you have right. a safety plan or a, a cautionary plan. Um, right. it's, just, it's just being prepared for life because you just don't know um, mm-hmm. what life can throw at you. Even, yes, if, right. even if you look at like people that are very successful with their main dream, if you think about, say, Kobe Bryant, for instance, his, his sequel or his follow-up to his career was probably going to be more impactful than what he ever did on the basketball court. Um, he was doing things outside of athletics that were more – I guess, impactful or had a greater impact than what he would have done as a basketball player. Right. And, and he was able to, to compartmentalize and think of life after. Because even if you make it to the NFL or to the NBA, you play for X amount of years. And then you still have the rest of your life you have to live. Mm-hmm. And so you got you to gotta be able to think about that. Um, it's tough when you're 13 and you're thinking <laughs> – right you're thinking I'm going to feel like this for the rest of my life and I'm going to want to do this for the rest of my life. It, it just doesn't like life doesn't allow you to do that. Um, life will allow you to do something that you, that you love and that you're passionate about maybe for a certain amount of time, whether that's four or five years. For me, it was four, I think it was four or five years. And then I, I was kind of forced to do something else. Good. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? 
from the adults? Well, hi, um, Mr. Jordan. This is Nelson. Hey, how you doing, LT? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> doing great. This is not a question, but I, I just want to um, just uh, say how much I appreciate what he's doing. And um, uh, uh, one of the things that got me excited is the fact that even while he was hurt, he didn't stay down. And to me, that's a big inspiration to the other kids who didn't make it as far as he did. And and how um, some of them have give up. I mean, have given up. You know, have got hurt or uh, uh, didn't have the necessary like the scholarship and things like that, and they have given up. But I love the fact that you, even though you played and it was your desire to to become the best, and here you are hurt and you can't play anymore. But look at how you have pursued a, a career, and now you can give back to the other young men and women who is coming up who um who might probably face in the same thing situation as you have facing and could go on and still make a good life and be an example to the community because i've seen um grown men who uh whether it's in the professional uh career as a, a football player uh who has um got hurt and they have nothing to fall back on and most of all they just they got depressed because it's like their dream has been crushed but yeah. you have overcome so much that can really inspire and encourage so many of our young people that even if you fall, you can get back up and get get back into, uh, it might not be the same game as far as uh, basketball, football, but you can do some things and really inspire others and pull them out of the place where they are not um, stuck in that same hole or, or depending on someone else for the rest of their life. So I really appreciate that. And uh, well, I have a question. Uh, how... Um, are you now involved in other organization where you giving back? Because I'm sure with the inspiration that you have and just seeing other young men and women coming up, uh, probably end up uh, stuck in certain areas of life. I'm sure there's so much that you have that you can offer. Are you working with other kids in that uh, aspects? Um, not currently right now. I have done things um, back home with uh, like my, my high school basketball coach to try to give back to the community that I grew up in. Um, I haven't really done too much here in Atlanta. Um, when I first moved here, I was working with uh, some youth at the local YMCA. And, and that, was, that was enjoyable because I was able to, to work with kids that were four or five years old. And um, I felt like I could, you know, I could speak to them and, and you know, just try to inspire them the best way that I could. But I'm not, I'm not currently doing anything. Awesome, awesome. All right, thank you, sir. No problem, thank you. Well, Nelson, we had already discussed um, actually two years ago of um, LeVon coming out doing a basketball tournament. This was pre-COVID. So after right. COVID kind of dies down, probably next year, Slick will host a basketball tournament with LeVon being one of the uh, mentors, coaches, teachers. Um, so that will be up and coming, hopefully for 2022. Ooh, we we'll love it. I'm excited about it. I hope Junior get a chance to play. <laughs> All right, thank you, guys. <laughs> Anybody else has a question? I have a question. Where do you, oh, you said you're 35. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Oh, the next 10 years. Um, I hope within the next 10 years, I have a very diverse um, investment portfolio. And by that time, I have a couple of businesses that I'm running myself. That's, that's, that's the idea. So hopefully I can get there within the next 10 years. And those plans have changed, obviously, because of various things that have taken place in my life so what do you think was your worst injury my worst injury um by far tearing up my acl and mcl yo my a i just tore my acl two years ago and i'm only 12. really uh how how are you rehabbing i'm fine oh i went to therapy and stuff okay okay 
Do you feel like you've recovered? Bro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, take care of that. The ACL is is vital. Yeah, but now I'm 13, so I'm good now. Okay. Okay. Well, I have a couple of questions if nobody else don't. So you mentioned that once you experienced that uh, injury and you went through a bit of depression, how did you deal with that? Since, you know, that is on the forefront these days, especially in our culture. Um, how did you deal with depression as a young man during that time? Um, I think the biggest thing was actually identifying it because you don't, you don't recognize it like right away. Um, I, I struggled just because I had just become so accustomed to playing basketball and then to, to go through finding out that I'm not going to be able to play for whatever reason, whether it's injury or not. Um, it was just a, it was a tough thing. It was a tough thing to adjust to. Um, I think one of the biggest things I had to realize is that it's not the end of the world um, because there, there are people that have to deal with adversity every day and they figure out a way to, to work through it. Um, even with sports, even if you're healthy, you go through wins and losses, bad games and good games. So it, you just kind of, I try to um, identify it or com compare it to sports and just use the things that I've been taught coming up through sports to, to kind of like work my way through it. Um, I think one of, one of my coaches in college, they would always tell us that, that basketball reveals character. Um, and it also, it reveals character and it actually um, shows character. So um, I just, I kind of just thought about those things and like, you just know you can't, you can't give up as much as you may would like to. Um, you just gotta kind of figure out a way to, to find that next chapter in your life to, to be able to move forward. Okay. Another question, um, how important is it for parent, grandparent, guardian, um, to help a child seek what their purpose or possible career is. How important is it? I know your mom and grandma was heavily involved in your corner. What would you tell parents that have that's online or grandparents that don't, that's online? What would you tell them how to how to folk how to help their child focus on their passion and their career. You knew from a young age that you wanted to play basketball, but you also knew that your mom and grandma wanted you to also focus on education. So. Right. so um, I think the, one of the, the biggest things, I know for me, knowing that I had the support from them, I was confident in pursuing what I had dreams about. Um, I think it kind of tears kids down if they don't feel that support from home. Because if you don't feel it from home, then you have to go outside of the house to kind of to find that support system or to find those people that you feel like love and care about you. I think for me, that helped just give me the confidence to pursue it. Because I'm pursuing something that I have no idea how I'm going to accomplish it. But knowing that my mom and my grandmother, they think I can do it. so. Uh, it's possible. Um, so I know even with my son, I just try not, I try not to, as, as his father, I try not to uh, project what I want him to be. Um, I kind of just let him go through it organically. Uh, he's only four, so obviously he has a long way to go. But um, I know there's things that, uh, that he'll want to get into, and I'll try to make sure that I'm supporting him because of this is his desire and not necessarily mine. So I think as parents, you just want to make sure you're not, you're supportive and then you're also not getting in the way of your, your child's dreams because it's something that you want them to do. It's actually something that they want to do themselves. Okay, so do you expect for your son to kind of sort of follow in your footsteps? Uh, kind of follow in your footsteps now? Of, of course I would love for him to play basketball. Um, I think... Um, my my thing will be whatever he wants to pursue, 
when you say you want to pursue it, we're going to work towards pursuing it. It's not going to be any half stepping. Um, but I don't know. I, I kind of want him to fall in love with what he wants to fall in love with. Although I will have my ways of persuading him if I can. Of course. So, but right now he doesn't, he doesn't love basketball. He loves football because he likes to, to push people. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. What year did you start playing? Uh, what year did I start playing just in general? Yeah. Probably like 1989. I'm old. Nice. And do, Very interesting. Do we have any other questions or comments? Oh, yeah, I want to be a soccer player. So, like, do you have any words? Any words for being a soccer player? Or any job? Um, if you want to be a soccer player, I would suggest, like, I think now more than ever, like, you have access to those that are already doing it. So if you have, like, a favorite soccer player, like, there are social media platforms where you can follow that individual. Um, so that was that was different for me coming up because I didn't have – those uh those tools so to actually see something that you want to pursue and you can follow somebody that's currently doing that at a high level i would suggest starting there and then you just work on your craft from there all right thanks you're welcome okay if there's no other questions levon has um some questions he wanted to ask and he'll explain what it is, I'm going to let him take it that part. Okay, let's see. All right, so I have three questions. Um, I guess, Ms. Latanya, would you want them to answer in the chat? And I guess whoever answers in the chat. Yeah. Okay, so I have three questions um, that I'll ask. And if you all will reply in the chat, and whoever has all three correct, I can email you a gift card from Nike. So let me know when everybody is ready. And repeat that someone just joined in and one of my kids just joined in. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to call out these three questions and you all can reply in the chat and whoever gets all three correct, I'll email you a Nike gift card if that's cool. Okay. Bye. Hopefully, hopefully I covered everything in my speech. <laughs> okay. Five. Four, three, two, one. Who is my all-time favorite basketball player? Type in the chat. Okay, time up for that one. Hey, you want me to go with the next one? Yeah, hold on. Let me. Are we going with who responded first or who just get all three? I would say who gets all three. Okay. All right, next question. Name two current NBA players that I played against in college. I don't think they remember that one. Type in the chat box. Got one person. All right, time. Next question. All right, last question. Uh, name one foreign country that I play professionally in.
Okay, five, four, three, two, one. All right, let me see if I can figure this out. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, what was the uh, answer to question one, Lamont? Uh, favorite player of all time is Kobe. And we got... One, okay, a couple of people have their phone labeled iPhone, so I won't know your name. Okay. We got several people that got that answer. Well, my, my name's Alex, and I said Kobe. Okay, yeah, I see you. You just put that in the chat. Same. Okay, the second answer. Uh, two current NBA players, it would be Steph and Chris Paul. A lot, of, see, a lot of people got Steph. Steph, but a lot of people didn't get Chris, they didn't get the second one. And the last question was, let's name a country that I played uh, professionally in. And I do see Spain. So Spain is correct. So right now the only person I think that answered all three, well, no one got the second person or the second question. How do you want to handle that? I'm fine with if they only got one. Okay. So is there anybody that got all three? Me. Hold on, let me <laughs> hold on, let me verify. Looks like Nelson. Nelson and Ralph looks like. Yeah, I know I probably messed up spelling Kobe wrong. I was it trying to rush. I was trying to ru rush <laughs> to get it. <laughs> trying to tie. All right. Uh, Nelson and Ralph are the two that got. Nelson and Ralph? Mm -hmm. All right. Nelson and Ralph, can y'all just drop your emails in the chat? Ralph, type your email address in the chat. Minister Nelson, chap, drop, drop your email in the chat. Does anybody have any more questions, any comments? Anybody got any comments before we log off? Well, yeah, this is Nelson again. Um, I want to really, I want to say that I really appreciate coming on today and um, appreciate meeting you, brother, and I'm hoping to meet you in person sometime when LT start this um, awesome league, when you guys start this awesome league. I really enjoy it. It's my first time doing this. My wife told me, look, I need you to go on there. I'm busy. You take care of this. And here I am. And I truly enjoy this. <laughs> well, I appreciate it's a pleasure it. To, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Jordan. And I, I really enjoy your story, man. It's really inspiring. I love the fact that you pursue your dream. I love the fact that you didn't stay down. You get up and you make a career and, and you can really inspire so many young people because I work with men myself and I've seen the absence of so many fathers in this young people life and the fact that we can have young men that is coming up that pursue and overtake and, 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 and are successful now and then could give back and inspire these young men that we, that we've seen the trouble, we've seen what's going on, but to have guys like you that is there um, to really inspire them, to me, it inspired me also as a father who have a son. And I really appreciate you guys and LT, I really appreciate what you're doing and we'll, we'll be back. All right, thank you guys. Okay. No problem. Thank you. I really appreciate the kind words. Anybody else? And for those who don't know, and I, I hope it's okay, uh, uh, LaVon and his family are just getting over COVID. Yes. So um, 
you all continue to be in prayer for them as they recovering. I think they're doing much better now. Um, as you know, COVID is spreading quick and fast. So I'm glad that he's feeling much better and was able to participate and do this. And um, I think it was a great, great, awesome job, LeBon. And Thank you. Everybody enjoyed it. Anybody else want to say something? Go on once. Um, I, I really like this speech. It was beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate that, my man. That's actually Morgan. She's a young lady. She decided she wanted to cut her hair. I'm sorry. Thank you. I appreciate that. So there was a comment uh, from Sandy Justice. She truly enjoyed it. Uh, Amber Dion, thanks for the invite. Very inspirational. Um, but I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who went in. This is by far the greatest or the largest audience we've had on one of our Zoom calls thus far. Um, we will have another Purpose, Passion, and Career program class on the 6th, where we'll have uh, actually Sandy and Tony Justice's oldest son, San Coyas, a T Sergeant San Coyas Justice, who is in the military made a career out of it and is also a professional bodybuilder, him and his wife. So that is coming up on the 6th. And uh, we have a next cooking class at the end of next month. So uh, if you all would like to donate to SLIC, you can go to our website, www.slicinternational.com, all one word. Uh, or you can, you know, cash up us at the dollar sign speak, S-P-E-A-K, for the number four, slick, all caps, S-L-Y-C. Uh, so we can continue to do things like this. Um, all of our speakers will get a slick t-shirt, uh, which LeVon will get his hopefully within the next two weeks. And um, so if y'all know of anybody who would be interested in pouring into our youth, and doing things like this, please let me know either for those who are Facebook friends with me, inbox me or email me for those who have my email or you know text me. So I want to thank you all again for participating. And Levon, you have any last words? Excuse uh, me. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but my brother accidentally left the one that that won the gift card. Uh, can you let him back in? Because he it uh, accidentally he accidentally left. Okay, got him. Sorry. No problem. And go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just going to say thank you guys for, for having me, um, allowing me to share my stories, and I certainly appreciate the feedback and all the questions. Hopefully, uh, look forward to meeting everybody at some point, you know, once this COVID thing has passed us and everything, but um, just thank you. Okay. Well, at this time, we're going to log off. If you give me about 20 minutes, this video will be on our YouTube channel. And I will also send text messages and have it posted on Facebook. So if you all want to invite people to go check it back out. And um, y'all have- What's the YouTube channel called? You all have a great Saturday. And thank you again. What's the YouTube channel called? Okay, you're going in and out, not sure what's going on with your mic. Okay, well, we'll see y'all. What's your YouTube channel called? Uh, the YouTube channel? If you do a uh, search on YouTube for SLYC International, um, it should pop right up. Yeah, I found it. Thank you. Okay. All right, so y'all have an excellent day and stay warm for those who are in the northern states, Florida. I know y'all have mellow, mild temperatures. And for those who are on the health start kick, in the healthy kick, I did 4.04 miles this morning. So y'all know I'm a little bit tired, but, uh, but I'm gonna take me a nap soon because I have another Zoom call in another hour and a half. So. Anyway, y'all enjoy yourselves. Talk to you soon, Nelson. Thank you, Sister Audra, and everybody that's online. What are you going to send it on? Uh, you guys I am getting ready to post it on YouTube in 30 minutes. The gift card. Oh. And them right now.
Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.